Hello and welcome to this IDS podcast on dotted vessels. My name is John Pauli from the University of Gothenburg in Sweden. When using dermoscopy to assess skin lesions or inflammatory conditions in which vessels are present, we should pay attention to three details. The vessel's morphology, how they are distributed within the lesion, and of course we can never forget other dermoscopic clues. For example, in this case we see glomerular or coiled vessels that are distributed within clusters or small groups. We can also see hyperkeratosis or yellowish-white scales or keratin. And of course all of this put together leads us to the diagnosis of Bowen's disease. In this next case we see branched vessels which are commonly uh, distributed in a non-specific fashion. We also see a blue-gray ovoid nest at 9 o'clock and the diagnosis will be pigmented nodular BCC. And just one last case in which we see multiple comma-like vessels which have a very diffuse and even distribution. Furthermore, these are located within a cobblestone pattern making the diagnosis clear. This is an intradermal nevus. So, returning to the topic of this lecture, dotted vessels are bright red small caliber vessels with a pinhead appearance of pondermoscopy and the histopathologic correlation are vessels running perpendicular to the skin surface superficially in the papillary dermis. The presence of dotted vessels upon dermoscopy can be very important for the diagnosis. We can see them in flat melanocytic lesions such as Spitz nevi and melanoma. We can also see them very commonly in inflammatory conditions. And of course, we can't forget other diagnoses, including Bowen's disease. Although in Bowen's disease, most of the dotted vessels will be glomerular if we can zoom in enough to see them in larger scale. In non-pigmented Spitz nevi, it's common to see dotted vessels with a very regular distribution throughout the lesion, also in combination with white lines as seen here. Here we have another example of a non-pigmented Spitz nevus with dotted vessels with a regular distribution in combination with white lines. In slightly pigmented Spitz nevi, we might still see dotted vessels in combination with white lines, but the distribution of the dotted vessels will not be as regular. In this more atypical lesion, we can see white lines surrounding both dotted vessels in the central part, but also surrounding brown globular clods in the periphery. Of course, in these cases, we have to exclude melanoma in situ, but in the end, histopathology confirmed the diagnosis of atypical Spitz nevus. In this case, we also see dotted vessels with an irregular distribution. We also see white lines surrounding the vessels, but again, also surrounding brown clods or globules. So we have the appearance of a negative network. Finally, we also see an atypical network and the formation of blotches. And of course, in this case, melanoma was confirmed. Of course, all cases of melanoma are not as clear cut as in the previous one. Here we can see dotted vessels with an atypical distribution within the area marked as a black circle. This is surrounded by a slightly atypical network and in the central parts of the lesion we can see a negative network starting to appear. This case was a melanoma in situ. Here we have another case of melanoma in situ in which the surrounding pigment isn't very atypical. However, we do see prominent skin markings and at around 3 or 4 o'clock we see a very irregular distribution of dotted vessels. Of course, dotted vessels with an irregular distribution does not always indicate malignancy. In this case, histopathology confirmed dysplastic nevus, for example. And here we can see a completely benign compound nevus, which has dotted combined with comma vessels in the central area, with a quite regular distribution in this case, however, and of course they're surrounded by a peripheral network which is typical for this diagnosis. Now switching to inflammatory conditions, here we can see two cases of psoriasis, normal plaque psoriasis to the left and gutate psoriasis to the right, uh, in which we can see a very regular distribution of dotted vessels throughout the lesion and white scales. And here we have a case of dermatitis with dotted vessels again with a regular distribution but in this case with white and yellow scales. But of course we can't only look at the type of vessels and their distribution, we also have to look at the other findings and of course we also see scabies mites as indicated in the black circles. <laughs>
As mentioned in the beginning, we can see dotted vessels very typically in melanocytic lesions and in inflammatory conditions, but we can also find them in other diagnoses. For example, here we see dotted vessels distributed in lines, or as it's called in strings of pearls, in a clear cell acanthoma. We can also see dotted vessels within a central white patch, in this case of dermatofibroma. We can also find dotted vessels in porokeratosis. In this case, we can see the regular distribution of dotted vessels throughout the lesion in combination with the typical scales at the periphery within the coronoid lamella. Another diagnosis in which we can sometimes see dotted vessels within the homogeneous red areas is pyogenic granuloma. Another example is viral warts, in which we can see dotted vessels, often in combination with blood spots, and warts located in the plantar area. Sometimes dotted vessels are surrounded by a whitish halo, so-called centered vessels, as seen here within condyloma. So in summary, dotted vessels are unspecific findings, but they are very common in melanocytic lesions, especially spitz nevi or melanoma. We can see them in inflammatory conditions, including psoriasis and dermatitis. And of course, besides the glomerular vessels, we can also see dotted vessels in some cases of Bowen's disease. They can, however, also be seen in a variety of other lesions as shown in this podcast. And as mentioned previously, when vessels are present, we should always take into account both the vessel type and their distribution, but never forget other dermoscopic clues which will help us make the correct diagnosis. Thank you very much for listening, and until next time, bye-bye.